Hey, book readers, book lovers, book friends, welcome to read this book. I am your book hostess, LaShonda. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, this week, we are reviewing the book Deceived by Samaya Layton. And honey, it is drama. Oh, the drama. You know I love me some drama. But I wanted to read the intro into the book so you can understand just how she drew me into this book. It's the book of um, the story of Jackson and Skylar, who were young teenage lovers. And of course, the heartbreak of breakup and betrayal and all the angst with that. Um, you get a little bit of that, but it brings you into their current situation um, 15 years later where they are adults and they are successful and they are both unhappy and miserable. Um, but before you get into that, the prologue to this book is what drew me into, I have to read this story. So I'm going to read this to you real quick because yeah, and then you'll understand why I am just like, you should read this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the road to love is never an easy one to travel. In fact, it's quite dangerous. Oh, we would all like to think it's paved nice and smooth with no obst obstacles in the way that once you're on the path, it's a straight shot to happily ever after. But who the fuck are we kidding? The ugly truth is the road to love is rough, dusty, and dry. It's full of potholes and debris and landmines and mirages, and it's littered with all the carcasses of those who never made it. That's a harsh reality. Most of us start out on that bullshit fantasy trip and get lost or discouraged along the way. We just give up, crash and burn before ever reaching that mystical mecca we call happily ever after. And who can blame those poor saps that just give up when the road gets too tough and becomes a danger to their sanity? The thing people never tell you about love, about true love, is one of the most unobtainable fucking things there is to achieve. Do you know why that is? Because love is like playing the slot machines at a casino. It's always a gamble. And it rarely pays out. Seldom do you get back what you put in when it comes to love. But you know who I feel the sorriest for? Those SOBs ensnared in love's trap. Those people who honestly believe in love, then get married only to end up divorced and bitter and just another battered and broken carcass on that godforsaken road. I'm glad that would never be me. I learned a long time ago that marriage is the devil's game and love is his bitch. Love wants your soul. My name is Jackson Delaney. When I was younger, I'd be loved at his own game when it was after me, nipping at my heels, trying to pull me down and destroy me. I cut out my fucking heart and kept running. Love hasn't darkened my door since. I know what you're thinking, that I'm just another one of those miserable carcasses on that road to love, right? Wrong. I made a U-turn and got off at the next exit and swore never to travel to that place again. You would be wise to heed my warning. Never, ever fall in love. What? Are you, tell me, tell me that you don't want to read this book. Tell me that you're, that you're like, <laughs> okay, Jackson, cynical much? Yeah, yeah. So as I said, this is the story of Jackson and Skylar. And um, as you heard, um, Jackson is very cold-hearted, very shaded. Cynical is not even a word to describe Jackson. Jackson is just a complete, unemotional, no strings attached. I just want to be, you know, bit friends with benefits, follow my rules, or get or hit the bricks type of person. He is just, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I I felt for Jackson. I felt for Jackson because. Of this one heartbreak that that Skylar that he that he suffers from Skylar, he has just never been able to give love and receive love and 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 have it flow freely. He's been one of he's a successful um, NFL football player, and so any woman that he's seen with, they have to sign a non disclosure. They have arrangements um, up front. You know, there are those that that are seen on his arm, and then there are, there are those that he just has relations with and he's good with that and um fast forward um 
his brother and si his brother and sister in law are killed um, by a drunk driver, and so he has to go back to Boston to grieve, you know, to to attend the funeral, and he walks into this bombshell of news. So um, he has a niece, his niece is Sutton. And so after the funeral, I mean with the attorneys, um, he's shocked that his brother has made him um, guardian of his niece Sutton and has power of attorney and you know, everything with her. And he's like, what am I gonna do with a kid? Like, what? Well, comes to find out that Sutton is not his niece. She's his daughter. His brother is not his brother, but his brother is really his father, and his father is really his grandfather. So after this funeral, all of these like family secrets, all these ghosts come out of the closet, and he's just like, what? What? Like, are you kidding me? Like, how is this my life? How did I not know what is happening? So he is like just thrown a huge monkey wrench and he's trying to put the pieces together but at the same time he's like oh my god I have a daughter I have a 14 year old daughter who I thought was my niece and he immediately feels like crap because he hadn't been around her because she reminded him of Skylar and you know he just wanted to be successful and live his life and he didn't really have the best relationship with his father which was his grandfather that we come to find out so i'm like feeling some type of way for jackson like oh 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 dude that's harsh like man how are you gonna adjust like wow so it picks up the pieces from there where he um, goes and talks to his son and she overheard and knows that he's her father and they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. And, you know, they're both in this space. And she was like, well, who's my mom? And yeah, turns out Skylar's her mom. So now he has to find Skylar and let her know that, um, well, one, he never knew about the baby, so he's pissed about that. But he has to go and find her and tell her that, hey, I have our daughter. This is what's happened. You know, help me out here. What are we going to do? So he finds her. Um, Skylar is like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? Um, you know, she's just like emotional wreck and breaking down because she always assumed that her child was adopted out to another family. That's what she was told. Um so he goes and he finds her, he tells her all that. He he comes out the gate just treating her like dirt. And I'm like, come on, man. You know, she she didn't know. She didn't know that your family had your daughter. She did not know any of this stuff. So she's just as blindsided as you are. But because he's pissed at her and he can't get past, you know, the breakup. He can't get past or whatever it is that happened. Um that led to the breakup he's just like a grade a jerk face to her but they call a truce so that they can help their daughter get to um you know get through this morning period because everything that she's done about her life has been a lie too right so they agree to that they're trying to build a relationship with her and it's just so much angst it's so much angst and just so much drama and you just want them to be like just be well just be well like jackson play nice jackson will not play nice with skylar he he doesn't want to admit that he love her he's still angry and mad at her and just how dare she and she's just kind of like dude I, i'm sorry i don't know how many ways to say that but i want to be a part of my daughter's life so she moves to texas uh, where they're at and she moves into his house and they're trying to build this relationship and build his family and they're getting along here and there but jackson is just a asshole he is so controlling and so possessive because that's the only way he's known how to function. He doesn't do anything with emotions, nothing. And so it's this balance between, you know, her wanting to have a relationship with her daughter. She loves him. She's always loved him, but he won't love her back. So she's trying to balance that and trying to figure out the dynamics. And at the same time, he wants his cake and eat it too. And I'm just like, girl, you... Skylar, you need to give Jackson the business and let him know that you ain't the one to play by. But no, she's trying to play nice. And so they are in Texas and they're finally gelling and trying to, you know, get to know each other, trying to let bygones be bygones and settle into this, you know, into this co-parenting thing. And, um, you know, Jackson 
knows that he loves her, but he don't want to admit it. He don't want to accept it. He's just done away with that whole thing. And um, so he's really, he's really harsh with her. He's really harsh with her. Um, the only time he shows her affection and tenderness is when they are, you know, sleeping together, when they are having sex. And then after that, it's like, he's back to being jerk face. And I'm like, come on, man. Come on. Enough is enough, Jackson. You're going to be a jerk and you're going to push her away. But she didn't. She stayed in. She was just really trying to make this work. Well, there's a whole nother backstory going on with Skylar because she's getting divorced um, from her ex-husband, which she never should have married from the jump. Okay? Don't be marrying people when you want a rebound. Don't marry people because you you want you want to give them a chance, but your heart belongs to someone else. That, that don't work. And she knew from the jump. She didn't really love him like that, but she figured she'd never see Jackson. She'd never have him, so... Let's move on with my life. Well, in the meantime, this guy is like obsessive. He's, you know, tracking her every move, trying to figure out where she went. He wants her back. There's some type of ulterior motive there that um, not quite sure what his game is, but he's like after her as well. And you have this whole story of these three people, these three broken people who are trying to put their lives together and become some type of family unit you have three people who want to love each other who want to have this family but don't really know how and it's funny because it's not sudden it's not the daughter you know she's working through her feelings but it's her parents who are just so incredibly ugh, they're just so like they can't get it together and you just this whole time i'm reading this book and i'm like Come on, you guys. I am rooting for you. Please just understand that you love each other. Please just get it together. You are meant to be. Like, I want them to have their happily ever after. I am, like, cheering for them. I want them to get it together. And Jackson just... He don't want to be in a relationship with Skylar, but he doesn't want anyone else to have her either. And that like pissed me off. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And it just gets to a point where, you know, he's trying to come to grip with how he feels. And so you fast forward um, a couple of months and then his father, who's really his grandfather, has a heart attack and dies. And so they have to go back to Boston for the funeral. And he's just like why is this my life? <laughs> why is this happening? You know, he don't really know how to feel because they had a very, um, um, strained relationship, especially after his brother, who was his father died and how his, his father did all this stuff. They had just a really strenuous relate. It was very strained. And so he never really reconciled with him and now he's dead. And he's like, you know, damn, why is this my life? And so he's talking to his mother, who's really his grandmother, <laughs> The drama people you know and she's basically like fool you love Skylar stop playing these games and go get your woman before it's too late you know stop it and he was like okay so he tucks his tail between his legs and he's heading back to Texas well in the meantime the drama catches up with Skylar and some things happen and she basically leaves a dear John letter um, to Jackson and Sutton and that's how the book ends. When I said drama, I meant drama. It was intense. It was infuriating. It was funny at times. It was just like, it was passionate. It was, it had all these elements to it. And like I said, I just, I wanted, I'm, I'm cheering for them. I wanted them to have a happily ever after. But this book obviously is, um, in a cliffhanger and so there's a book too um i think it's called perceived and um i'll be reading that next because i have to know i have to know what happens especially when uh he gets back and figure out what is he gonna do is he gonna go and save skylar or is he just gonna be a jerk face and be like i never should have gave my heart i don't really know but what i can tell you about this book was that it was an excellent well-written story i mean all the characters, you really got an insight into them and the intense family drama. I was just like, what? 
Oh, when they got to just laying out the secrets, child, I was here for it. I was here for every single word on this page. She has written a a very well written story. It has the layers. It has all all the elements that just draw you in. And um, I can't wait to read the next installment of it. So that is Deceived by Samaya Layton. It's available on Amazon. Get in where you fit in. Go get this book. You should definitely read it. So until next time, read a good book.